Take a look at that stringer right there. Oh my gosh. Welcome back, y'all. Today, we've got nice cool air still from the cold front. I'm gonna go to a popular spot on the island because I've been wanting to fish it for the longest time, but the winds have not been cooperating. Today, that is changing. So we're gonna get out there, toss around the paddle tail that Nick gave us, and uh, let's see how it does. Since we're gonna be moving to our next spot, I'm gonna use this time to re-rig. So y'all see this paddle tail right here. I've been using them for a little bit. I honestly don't really care too much for them. They do catch fish, just like every other lure catches fish, but the tails on those fellas fall off too easy. So we're gonna try out a new one. My buddy Nick gave me these right here, Salt Native by Catchco, the Skelly Swim. What I thought was really cool about this was Lawson Lindsay, Florida YouTuber, uh, uses these, he designed them. And Nick, I saw the video where he used them. He was like, hey man, give these a try. Tell me what you think. Uh, he was able to catch quite a few reds and these things like held up. So I'm pretty excited to use something like this that's designed for us saltwater fishermen because all the other stuff that they pretty much have put out has been for like freshwater and you can catch saltwater fish with freshwater lures I do it all the time but the plastics don't hold up they're nowhere near as strong as plastics that are specifically designed for saltwater so since that is the case we're gonna try these out Let's see what we're gonna be able to do with these fellas. That needlefish will not leave my lure alone. Yeah, look at that. You idiot. I wonder how long this plastic can last against their teeth. I've gotta hand it to Catchco. The plastic that they're using is it's pretty durable. There are a lot of Texas saltwater lures that our paddle tail, the plastics, they don't last for crap. First bite and then that's it, your tail is gone. And it's like, it's your fault because you're fishing something. Oh, look at that. What do we got? Oh yeah, speckle trout. Let's just put that up there. This is a nice little 13 incher right here. First fish on the paddle tail, brand new paddle tail. Look at that. Okay, let's get a photo of that for Insta. There we go. All right, the first fish. Nice speckled trout. Right on. Got a drain right there, and that's a really good spot to swim a lure by especially whenever you got the wind with you and the tide water is still high probably six to twelve inches it's doable now i mean the fish can still get inside there meaning the redfish all right i do not want to pass an opportunity like this up so here we go um let's get this guy into some action really fast. You gotta, you gotta make sure you cover these drains thoroughly because I guarantee there's a fish down here waiting to bite. No, oh yeah, look at that. 
<laughs> Let's get the ego. Uh, I knew there was going to be one down there. Goodness gracious, this dude is a big one. Oh my gosh, look at this. Uh, yeah! Whoo, that is a heavy monster. Oh my gosh, let's get this on. Whew, wow. Let's get spot lock on. Let's give it up for our gear that we're using. That, I mean, that just goes to show the bugs. That flats bug right there. That flats bug is amazing. Oh my gosh, this is a great flounder. I'm gonna see how big this fella is. What was my guess? I said 18 inches. Come on, don't make a liar of me. Ah, uh, 17 and a half. Y'all check that out right there. Almost. Look at the what he's got inside that mouth of his. Check that out right there. Flats bug. And when they bite it, I don't know if that's going to be seen in the sunlight, but anyhow, when, when they bite it, they got no choice but to take the entire lure in their mouth. Let's get our lure back and then we'll continue fishing. Okay, first fish in the boat. We do not get a skunk and I've been wanting to come here for the longest time. It's just we had to wait for the winds to come in at the, the correct direction. Oh, that is another, that is another one. Oh my gosh, the Lawson Lindsay lure. Seems like we got a big one too. Oh my God. Let's grab the ego. All right. Oh gosh. Oh wow, this one's even bigger. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, here we go. Get that guy on. Holy cow, right here at another drain. I am so glad that I decided to come hit this spot up and we barely had him hooked. Check this out, let's grab. Let's grab this, oh gosh, that hurt. Let's grab this boga. This guy, oh my gosh, did he fight. I'm gonna need you to open up real quick, buddy. Help me help you, even though you're gonna feed us. <laughs> He's not gonna open his mouth. That's the problem with flounder. Gosh, darn, bro. Look, okay, so he, that's all he had to do. And look at that. There goes the lure right there. But look at this. Holy cow. Boy, we got some, we got some wrapping paper right here. This guy looks like a big old stud right there. <laughs> oh, wow. And the lure. Oh, gosh. The lure didn't even get destroyed by it. That is a very durable plastic right there. I think I'm going to like using these especially if it's going to start bringing in stuff like that right there. It gives me a little bit more arsenal to go after all these big brutes out here in the salt water. Let's see how big this fella is. I, I'm going to say a little bit bigger than what our other one was. Oh gosh, 18 and a half inches right there, baby. I knew it. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I want you guys to play nice now. Look at that right there. Isn't that gorgeous? That stringer right there. Two nice big flatties right there. Here we go to a pretty decent speckled trout spot. You got 
that little rock wall right there and then somewhat right there it's a very deep cut that separates the lake from the bayou and because it's pretty deep speckled and a lot of current that rips through here during tide shifts speckled trout love to school up in this area make a few casts to see if they're here and then if they're not well we can cast right over there to that corner for some flounder let that drop a little bit there we go what is it what is it that's a mud chicken oh I thought that was the flounder because these guys pull so darn hard they fool you make you think you got something that you don't son I thought I had a flounder thought I had a flounder it's got a lot of growing to do we'll let that fella go why because the state of Texas says so that's why they got to be 20 inches here in the state of Texas 20 to 28 that's our slot There we go. We got him. Just like that. Let's get the ego ready. Boy, this lure is crushing them. There we go. All right. Let's hit spot lock right there. And we're gonna measure this fella because he's gonna be right there, probably 16 inches. Somewhere right there going on 17. What a flounder day, man, I'm telling you what. Boy, these guys. Let's get our measure board. Sixteen is what I'm gonna guess. Sixteen going on seventeen, somewhere around there. Oh, Fifteen and three quarters. Not bad at all. Check that out, everyone. All day long. So the fish are loving this paddle tail right there, and it's super durable. Having to compete with the uh, needlefish all day long chomping at its tail and the plastic is just dense enough so that it doesn't actually bust apart unlike some of the other stuff that I've been using lately this thing I think they got a, uh, a good lure right there plenty of action super durable let's get this guy on a stringer all right now look look at that Look at that stringer right there. <laughs> Boy, we're about to have a, a nice old big wind chime. All right, we're almost at the turnaround point. There's a, a drain right over here. And once I get there, that's where we'll uh, start heading back. Still a great day. I'm telling you what, we've been steady on the flounder bite. Just trying to hone in my skills with uh, specifically targeting these fellas. Slowing down a little bit, making sure the lure is at the bottom. Doing what I can to present it specifically to those guys. And if we happen to catch a redfish because we see one in the grass or something like that, then, I mean, those guys are fairly easy for me. I've spent the better part of three seasons like really targeting those fellas and uh, absolutely love catching them but for flounder the previous seasons I would just catch them by sheer luck because I was going after redfish now it's like these past few weeks I've been specifically targeting these guys and have had some really good success Okay, last and final cast right here. 
We've thoroughly fan casted the entire area, several and no bites from anything in there. So we're gonna start heading back. Needlefish. Oh my God, see that's what I was talking about. Well, the lure finally gave way, was able to catch two flounder with it and hundreds of needlefish bites. They get it just right and then you try to set that hook like you swing for the fences and it's gonna finally give way and that's what happened to this fella right here. Let's put another one on and uh, I will be completely impressed by these lures. I mean, super durable, my gosh. <laughs> all right baby take a look at that stringer right there oh my gosh all right that is another killer day out there on the water if you have an opportunity to come out to the texas gulf coast you need to do it asap while this cold weather is here the flounder are moving and if you drag the bottom you're gonna have a very good shot at catching some of them. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.